Hello everyone and welcome back to Minecraft Basics Episode 2. This is a series where we go over the basics of Minecraft, but don't let that word fool you, because some of the stuff that we go over provides some necessary base knowledge to build some pretty advanced stuff. And I can especially say that that's true for this episode, because we're going to be talking about water mechanics. So, let's get right into it. Alright, so let's get started. Now, first of all, water flows 8 blocks in any direction and of course by placing blocks to its sides you can manipulate its direction but as you guys see it stops at eight blocks and also water tends to flow towards nearby water sources so as you guys can see this is not spreading it's just going directly towards this water source and also one more thing water chooses to flow downwards over across so if i place water right here it goes down into this uh hole instead of flowing down across like this and yeah that is basically how water flows second unlike lava you can make infinite water sources now the most classic design for this is just by digging a four by one hole and placing water on each corner and as you can see you can get an infinite amount of water from this but a more compact and practical design would just be to dig a three wide hole play, place water one block away from each other and as you can see the middle is an infinite source also making use of water and lava if you dig a two wide hole with one block separate in the middle and make this hole go down one block and place your water on the hole that goes down one block and place your lava on the hole that goes straight and once they come into contact they will start producing cobblestone and there we go that's how you make a stone generator pretty useful for farming third most opaque blocks have the ability to be waterlogged now for example these solid blocks i can't place water into them i can either place it on the sides for example or on top as you can see but objects such as this chest this fence <laughs> this fence <laughs> and this sign can be waterlogged and also make sure to shift click uh, just a little tip, if you're trying to place something on blocks that can be interacted with, you have to shift click onto them in order to actually place it instead of interacting with it. But as you can see, we're able to place water into that uh, chest, into the sign, and into the fence. Next, by making a tube like this, of course it doesn't have to be glass, you can actually make a water elevator. Now. You can just place water on every block, but a more easier way is to just place water at the very top. And if you get some kelp, you can place it on each of these blocks, because if you don't already know, kelp uh, makes water sources where you place it. So now all of these are water sources. And soul sand makes you go upwards, whilst uh, magma blocks drag you downwards. So if you place that here and go to the top, as you can see, it sucks us down. Now, soul sand is not only useful for moving players upwards, it's also useful for moving items upwards. So, if we place some items into this dispenser and create an observer clock, as you can see, the items are now flowing up to prevent them from f flying all the way out like that. Let's just place a block on top of it to cover it. And there we go. Now as you can see, you can transport items up with water, but you can also transport them across just by placing the water up here. And let's cover this up so the items can't escape. And place some more items. And there we go, as you can see the items flow all the way down here, but there's one problem. The water only flows 8 blocks, and to get across this problem, all you have to do is get ice place it down and get a slab place it on top and with this you can continue the flow of water now what this slab does is it stops the water from interacting with each other and making it flow backwards or anything like that and the ice just helps the items glide across and if we just cover this up and fill this back up with items now as you can see the items are going all the way from this dispenser all the way into this chest so as you can see water is a great way for item collection 
And also just another tip, um, as you can see, things like this chest are not full blocks. There's a little gap between them. And that's why you can use the chest to align your items. So for example, if we get some of this, just drop it down. And as you can see, with the help of the chest, the items are aligned and go into the hopper so that you can collect them. And yeah, these are all just some ways you can use water for item collection. Next, let's go back to the water's flow limit for a second. As you can see, the water flows 8 blocks. But to get around this problem, if you want it to go even further, just go 1 block before its flow limit, break it down, and as you can see, it keeps on going 8 more blocks, and if you just keep on doing this, you can make the water flow down forever and ever. Let's break one down, and it flows across. Finally, as a bonus, I'd like to show you guys how to make a nether portal with just a water bucket and some building blocks. Now, this is especially useful for things such as speedrunning to get to the nether quickly. And all that's required for this is just some lava lake. You can find this underground or sometimes even above ground. And it has to be at least four blocks wide. Once you find your lava lake, just place down a block and next to it place your water. Break the block and there we go, we got the base of our little portal here. Next what you have to do is go up to this left side and place one and two blocks like so. And on the right side, one, two, three, and one across. And then place a water bucket on the back side of this little pole. And then you can just use a normal bucket to just get lava and place it into the edges and fill up the portal. Now another portal is required to be at least two blocks wide and three blocks tall. So that is one, two, and three blocks. And let's fill out the two in the top. And there we go, that's a completed nether portal. You can get your water back and with the help of a flint and steel, you can light up your portal. But yeah, with that, I'm gonna end off today's video, guys. I hope you were able to learn a little something new. And if you did enjoy the video, I'd appreciate if you could leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.